بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وأهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين المعصومين والأخيار من صحابته المنتجبين ومن تبعهم بإحسان وإيمان إلى يوم الدين One of the contentious issues between the true traditions of Islam the Shia tradition and the Sunni tradition is the controversy around surrounding the wives of the Prophet, peace be upon him. We know that the Prophet, for several reasons, social reasons, religious reasons, economic reasons, military reasons, had to marry several wives from various tribes and nations and even religions. Some of them were previously Jews. The others, another one was previously Coptic Christian. A third one was one of the daughters of his fierce enemy, Abu Sufyan, Habiba bin to Abi Sufyan. He was the fierce enemy of the Prophet. He was fighting the Prophet for a long period of time, long period of time. Over 20 years, he was fighting the Prophet and trying to put an end to Islam. Some of them were from ordinary people. Some of them were related to the Prophet, like his cousins. And those women were not equal. What do we believe? What do we say about the wives of the Prophet? This is what we say. Those wives were not equal in their faith. Some of them were very noble, very good, very religious, very committed. They learned the manners, the akhlaq, the commitment, the faith from the Prophet, peace be upon him. They were greatly inspired by him. Like Khadija, alayhi salam, Khadija bint Khuwail. She was the wife of the Prophet for a long period of time. And when she died in Mecca, and she gave her wealth to Islam, and she died penniless, literally penniless, after spending all her money, being a multimillionaire, being one of the three richest in Mecca, and then spending the entire money on the Muslims and dying penniless. The Prophet never forgot about her. He kept remembering her in goodness. She gave me when people deprived me. She stood in solidarity with me when people abandoned me. She believed in me and accepted me when people denied me. He used to praise Khadija. So she's one of the most noble of his wives. Um Salama, another perfect wife of the Prophet. Zainab bint Jahsh, another perfect wife of the Prophet. Maria al Qiptiya, though before she was a Christian, but she when became, when, once she became Muslim and she delivered Ibrahim to the Prophet. Ibrahim died at the age of maybe 20 months or 22 months. Before reaching the age of two, he died. And the Prophet buried him in Baqiya, another excellent wife of the Prophet. And many others, Zainab bin Jahsh, and, you know. But some of them, the Prophet had to marry them for some political reasons to be able to be able to get their families on his side. If he does not get them on his side, they are going to be troublemakers. And we have this in the Quran. We have the term of Al Mu'allafati Qulubuhum. Al Mu'allafati Qulubuhum that those that you try to incline their hearts towards you. Because if you don't give them, if you don't do favor to them, if you don't appoint them in this leadership role and that leadership post, then they're going to make trouble for you. They're going to be the source of instability or disstability in your community. This is a fact. And the Prophet was a statement. He wanted to begin his nation, his ummah, his estate, his community, and place it on solid foundations. So he had to deal with all these intricacies around him. 
Some were very fine and very good. They would believe in him. They would accept him, endorse him right away without any expectations. Others, they would do deal with him. You do this to me, I'll do this to you. You marry my daughter, I'll be very good to you, very nice to you. Give me your, daught your daughter to marry her, I'll be very good to you. This is a fact. We have to admit to this fact. So the Prophet had to marry them for certain interests. Not, not personal interests, but interests that help Islam and advances the cause of God and faith and religion. So this is our opinion on the wives of the Prophet. Some of them were very noble, very dedicated, and they remain dedicated to the rest of their life. Others were not very dedicated. Others were about the dunya. And this is exactly the wording of the Quran. Ya Nisa an Nabi, in kuntunna turidna dunya wa zinataha, fata'alayna umatti'kunna wa usarrihkunna sarahan jamila. Wa in kuntunna turidna Allah wa Rasulahu wa dar al akhira, fa inna Allah a'adda lil muhsinati min kunna ajran azima. O the wives of the Prophet, if you are intending to help me to remain patient, steadfast, to stick with my path, not to be rebellious, not to be disobedient, and walk with me and help me till I reach my goal, which is God and the last day of judgment, then I will be with you and God is going to reward you. But if you want to, if you want, if you seek the dunya, if you seek the dunya and you have no good intention, and you are married to the Prophet, but you don't appreciate him, you don't respect him, you don't value him, and you put your special interest and lower interest above the interest of God and Islam, then I will give you your dowry and I will set you free. Go back to your homes. This is exactly what God asked the Prophet to say to his wives. And we're going to read more and more about what happened between the Prophet and some of his wives. So we can discover the true opinion of Shia Islam on the wives of Prophet Muhammad In Islam, we learn from the Holy Quran that blood relations and family relations and bond of marriage alone does not ensure a safe passage to heaven. Meaning that if someone is related to the Prophet only by blood, but not by faith, not by, not by ideology, related to the Prophet only by marriage, but not by commitment to his cause and his message and his spirit, then that person is not going to be granted an automatic admittance to paradise. That person is not going for the sake of the Prophet, being with the Prophet, but not following his path, is not going to be given paradise. Paradise is given based on one thing, not a blood relationship, not family relationship, not marriage, not friendship. It is based on good deeds. وَالْعَصْرِ إِنَّ الْإِنسَانَ لَفِي خُسْرٍ إِلَّا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ Good faith and good deeds. Combination of both. They will give any person, be it black, be it red, be it white, be it Arab, be it Indian, be it African, be it South American, be it Chinese, will grant him safe passage, victorious passage, to paradise. God does not look at the family name. God does not look at the blood type of a blood that you carry. God does not look at the color of your skin. He looks at your real commitment. And this example is illustrated in the Holy Quran. Listen to what the Holy Quran says. Surah Al-Tahrim, chapter 66. 
Chapter 66, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in verse number 10 says, ضَرَبَ اللَّهُ مَثَلًا لِلَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا مْرَأَةَ نُوحٍ وَمْرَأَةَ لُوط God brings forth a parable for those who disbelieved the wife of Noah and the wife of Lot. Although they were the wives, not girlfriends, wives, permanent wives, with the Prophet in his house, in his bed, under the same roof. They eat together, they sleep together, they talk together. But they chose not follow them in their message. They chose to betray them and go against them. Betrayal here means, specific meaning, means not to follow their message and their faith. ضَرَبَ اللَّهُ مَثَلًا لِلَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا مْرَأَةَ نُوحٍ وَمْرَأَةَ لُوطٍ كَانَتَا تَحْتَ عَبْدَيْنِ مِنْ عِبَادِنَا صَالِحِينَ They were under two of our righteous servants, meaning that they were supposed to be inspired by them. They are close to them. They talk to them all, all the time. They were supposed to be attached to them and be guided by them, but that didn't happen. Because it's about personal choice. Faith is about personal choice. And they chose, their personal choice was not to follow my husband, even though he's saying the right thing. They rebelled against them. They betrayed them in their message. When they turned against them, that action would never help them with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. On the day of judgment, it is said to them, enter the hellfire with those who are going to enter. They are going, this means that God is not going to forgive them. Because some people say, okay, they betrayed the Prophet. Maybe God is the most merciful, oft forgiving, he will change his mind. He would accept them. He will feel sorry for them at one point and say, okay, okay, I know, I know you did very bad, but now I'm going to change my mind and send you to paradise. No. This is the ultimate, the final judgment. She was the wife of the Prophet. She was with him. So being with the Prophet, sleeping with the Prophet, having a son from that prophet, eating with the prophet, being next to him 24 hours a day would not avert you from the punishment of God if you choose not to follow that prophet and if you choose to defy him and if you choose to betray him. This is the logic of the Quran. We should use the logic of the Quran not our own logic. We should use the argument of the Quran. Now we come to the wives of the Prophet. Some of them chose to disobey the Prophet. Some of them chose to defy the Prophet. Some of them chose to harass the Prophet. Some of those wives unfortunately gave hard time to the Prophet. They gave him hard time. Some of those some of those were troublemakers. And this is not a fairy tale. What I am telling you is not a fairy tale. It's exactly in the same chapter. Some of them were threatened by God that the Prophet would divorce them and get rid of them. Some of them were close to the Prophet physically, but mentally and spiritually, they opted to disobey him and disagree with him. So do you want me here to praise such people just because she was the wife of the prophet? If God is not praising her, if God actually is dispraising her in Surah Al-Tahrim, when we read Surah Al-Tahrim, he's dispraising her, he's criticizing her, He's threatening her. Do you want me 
to say that all of them were excellent just because they lived with the Prophet in the same house. This is nothing but bigotry, my friends. This is nothing but illogical and nonsense. And this goes against the discourse and the logic of the Holy Quran and the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. One of the fundamental verses in the Quran and rather chapters of the Holy Quran that allow us to understand the stand of some of the wives of the Prophet against him and what they did to him and subsequently we base our opinion about the wives of the Prophet upon the Holy Quran upon what God had taught us we never we shouldn't have any bias against any person we follow what God says in the Quran if God says this person is a good person committed we start loving that person and appraising him and trying even to follow him and follow his example but if God says this person did not do good this person created a problem for us and if God is showing me that God himself is criticizing him or her for their mischiefs for their injustice for their corruption for their deviation then I should not be more Catholic than the Pope and say well maybe God is over exaggerating you know you know this guy is still good this this guy is still nice and we should always praise him we should defend him no we follow God Islam is to submit to the will of God to the opinion of God to the opinion of the Prophet they have to put you as the judge they have to listen to you the things that you like and you say it's correct they follow them the thing or the people that you say they are bad and terrible stay away from them they have to listen to you and stay away from them this is the spirit of Islam my friends this is why we have two different schools in Islam one of them very loyal to the Prophet and his family and to the Holy Quran and ultimately to God the other wants to have ijtihad their own opinion their own innovations and bid'ah and they start you know doing some editing here and correction here and you know some uh, innovations here that does not work in Islam Islam is based on submission to God and the Apostle of God. Now, what does it say in Surah Al-Tahrim? Let's recite a few passages, passages of this verse. Ya ayyuhan nabiyya, a'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim, bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Ya ayyuhan nabiyyu, lima tuharrim ma ahalla Allahu lak, tabtaghi mardata azwajika wa Allahu ghafoorun rahim. Why do you forbid yourself what God had made lawful for you? What happened? Why the Prophet made something unlawful for him? The hadith is narrated by Aisha and Hafsa themselves. They say the Prophet used to spend some time with his wife Zainab bin Tujahsh because she was newly wet. And while he was with Zainab in her quarter, in her room, she would present the Prophet some type of sweet drink some commentators exegists believe he it was it was honey some they say uh, they they call it uh, you know they give it different names sweet drink and Aisha and Hafsa conspired against the Prophet they were jealous of Zainab why the Prophet is spending time with her so when he comes to us let's tell him oh you smell very terrible you smell bad what did you drink today? And this is exactly what they did. The Prophet came to the room of Aisha. She said to him, you smell bad. What is this? Because they knew Zainab would extend and give him 
this drink that he also liked. The Prophet said, this is a drink given to me by Zainab. But if you don't like it, if you think this is bad, I'm not going to drink that again. Then he moved to the room of Hafsa, the daughter of Umar, and she said exactly the same. Oh, you smell bad. You smell terrible. What is this? Did you eat? Did you drink something terrible today? The Prophet said, this is the drink. I had it earlier, maybe the day or the day before with Zainab. My wife Zainab, and if you don't like it, if you think this is terrible, I'm not going to drink it anymore. So he said, I'm not going to drink that. Haram. He forbade himself from drinking. Ya ayyuhan nabi, lima tuharrim ma ahallallahu lak? Why do you forbid yourself what is a purely halal for you? What is halal for you? God made it lawful for you. Why do you punish yourself? Are you trying to appease those two women, your two wives? Wallahu ghafoorun rahim. But in fact, their intention was not the drink or the honey or the sweet drink that the Prophet had. Their intention was to separate the Prophet from that wife because they were jealous of her. They did not want the Prophet to go to her. So they wanted to make a scenario, a drama, that the Prophet would start hating Zainab. This was their intention. So it was a big conspiracy in the house of the Prophet, which is supposed to be a stable house, a house based on peace. And my friends, I am not telling you a fairy tale. This is not a verse or a chapter invented by the Shia in the Quran. This is Surah Al-Tahrim, chapter 66. Please go and read this chapter yourself. Re read it carefully and read the tafsir, all the tafasir, all the commentators, all the exegists on this chapter. They attribute this conspiracy to Aisha and Hafsa. قَدْ فَرَضَ اللَّهُ لَكُمْ تَحِلَّةَ أَيْمَانِكُمْ وَاللَّهُ مَوْلَاكُمْ وَهُوَ الْعَلِيمُ الْحَكِيمُ وَإِذَا أَسَرَّ النَّبِيُّ إِلَى بَعْضِ أَزْوَاجِهِ حَدِيثًا فَلَمَّا نَبَّأَتْ بِهِ وَأَظْهَرَهُ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ عَرَّفَ بَعْضَهُ وَأَعْرَضَ عَنْ بَعْضٍ فَلَمَّا نَبَّأَهَا بِهِ قَالَتْ مَنْ أَنْبَأَكَ هَذَا قَالَ نَبَّأَنِي الْعَلِيمُ الْخَبِيرُ Now listen, listen to this important part. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is threatening Aisha and Hafsa with divorce with condemnation and with eternal punishment in this life and the hereafter. Listen to this verse. Follow it, please, carefully. In tatuba ilallah, Allah is saying to Aisha and Hafsa, if you repent to God, فَقَدْ صَغَتْ قُلُوبُكُمَا Your hearts had inclined against the wish and the liking of the Prophet had declined against the desire of the Prophet, against the path of the Prophet. فَقَدْ صَغَتْ قُلُوبُكُمَا وَإِن تَظَاهَرَ عَلَيْهِ If you want to an expi uh, uh, if you uh, if you want to back each other against him and conspire against him, فَإِنَّ الله, The Lord is his guardian, his supporter. هو مولاه وجبريل is his supporter. وصالح المؤمنين Not all, all the mu'mineen. The righteous. The righteous among them. They are the supporters of the Prophet. And the angels. والملائكة بعد ذلك ظهير They are going all to back the Prophet and be on his side. And you're going to be left alone. So God is saying you Aisha and Hafsa are going to be on one side. On this side. God, his apostle, the angels. Jibreel and the community of the believers. So you are standing against the entire, you know, righteous people, beginning from God to the members of the community. It's a huge conspiracy. This is another threat because some people believe that they were the best among the wives. No, they were not the best among the wives. Neither they were the best among the women of Medina or the Muslim women. Because God is threatening them with talaq, with divorce. Asa rabbuhu in case. Asa rabbuhu in talaqa kunna an yubdilahu azwajan khayram min kun. 
He would replace you with better wives, better in iman, in faith, in commitment, in loyalty to the Prophet. So they were not the best. They were not the best because this is the Quran. This is the word of God. When I reflect on it, I find out that those two women were not the best. Asa rabbuhu in talaqa kunna an yubdilahu azwajan khayran min kunna. مسلمات مؤمنات قانتات تائبات عابدات سائحات ثيبات وأبكارا. So what we say about the wives of the Prophet is exactly what the Holy Quran says. No more, no less. We honor and respect the virtuous one among them and they are our ummahat, ummahatul mu'mineen. And those who chose to stand against the Prophet and against God, we would not admire them. Neither are we going to curse them. We don't have to curse them. But also we do not have to admire them and follow them and falsely claim that they were the best among the wives of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam.